Much love and appreciation, family. So for all of the brand new men's and women's shirts that you see and, and the limited edition sneakers that you see here, please visit the comment and or the description below the video. Um, I was at a sports store named Fanatics. I was buying a jersey and a little kid runs in there and says, it's an active shooter at Walmart. But me and the guy, we didn't pay no mind because, you know, he's just a little kid. So I walk out and I go to um, I go to Foot Locker and all I hear is, ball, ball. So I got my license to carry and I'm in the military. So I think it's, all I think is, you know, get my gun to think fast. So they, they closed, the footlocker closed the, uh, the cage, but some people lifted it. Because I guess they were so scared they wanted to make it out. So I, I peered out with them, and I just followed them. And I see a whole bunch of kids just running around without their parents. So I'm just thinking about the kids. So I, I pick up as many as possible and carry them with me. And another guy does it as well. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm shaking up. I can't think. But uh, I just peeled out. I, I just hope the kids make it safe, man, because it was a whole bunch of kids just running around without their parents. And I, I was worried about the kids more than myself. You said you heard the shots? Right? Yeah, he did too. Um, again, just tell us how you how this feels. Like. Well, I'm in the military, so I probably feel different for me because you know we're trained to when you hear a gunshot, to pull out your weapon and I think fast. So I'm just worried. I wasn't really worried about myself. I was worried about the kids. So I, I put my I put my stuff. Out. I just picked up the kids and just carried them with me. Me and the other guy did. We made it through dealers. So I wasn't really worried about myself. What ran through your mind when the, when the first shot rang out? When you heard the first shot, what ran through your mind? You know, I'm in the military. I can't. I couldn't even tell you. It's a feeling that anybody in the military can tell you. It's a feeling that you can't explain. You know what I'm saying? Your heart just. All you think is pull out your weapon and think fast. I'm curious. What were the kids? Do, what were the kids' reactions when you were just running, running around crying? They were all just running around crying, just running around, just running. And all I could think about was the kids. I was. I, I think about it as if my, if my if my child, if I have one, if my child was in this same predicament, what I would want somebody else to do. So I picked them up, and the other guy did as well. But it, it was it was so many kids that we couldn't pick them all up. You know what I'm saying? So I, I wasn't, I couldn't go back and, you know, do do what it do, but I try my best to, me and the other guys, try, my, try our best to get as many out as possible, but that's, that's all that was. I can't really do that. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. It was a U.S. Army specialist uh, of the shooting uh, on the phone right now. Specialist Glendon Oakley is joining us. I understand, uh, a specialist, that you, you were in the Cielo Vista Mall uh, at a sporting goods store. Take us through exactly what happened, what you saw. But before you do so, uh, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine right now. Just a little shaken up. I'm still here at the moment. Are you still uh, at the uh, mall? Yeah, I am. So, so tell us what you, you know, what you saw and heard. Well, uh, I was in a store. I think it's called uh, Fanatics or something. It's a sports store. I was buying a jersey, and the little kid ran in there and was telling us um, it's an active shooter in Walmart. But we didn't pay it no attention because, for one, it was just little kids, and then uh, for two, you're at the mall and at a Walmart. So how do you know that? So we just didn't pay it no mind. So uh, I walked to Foot Locker. And I just heard two gunshots, and a whole bunch of people started running around screaming. So uh, they shut the cage, the cage of uh, in Foot Locker, and I have my license to carry. And I'm in, I'm in the military, so when I hear gunshots, I just, we're trained to, you know, think fast and grab your weapon, think fast and save, take cover, you know, do anything you can. So um, a couple guys, they just ran out of Foot Locker, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm the only one with a weapon, and you know, that's legally carrying. So you know, I go with them because you know I can guard them or whatever, but. I see a whole bunch of a whole bunch of kids just running around without their parents. So I put it up, and the only thing I think of is just pick pick up as many kids as I can as possible. And there was another guy doing it as well. I don't know where he went to, but it was another Hispanic guy with me. He did it as well, and it was just I could say maybe a total of like 13 kids running around, but I can only get three, and I think he got about three as well because I, I I was just focused on the kids. I wasn't really worried about myself. So I was you know I put my head down and just ran as fast as I could. And um, once I seen a whole bunch of cops, I dropped them. I told them to go. So I pulled out my phone in case they were going to shoot me. So I pulled out my phone and started recording while I was running. They were just telling me, hands up, hands up. And I just, you know, I made it out safe. But I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about myself. I was just trying to get those kids out of there because, you know, I was just, uh, it was just so many kids just running around. And I was just thinking about if I had a child and, you know, if I wasn't around, how I would want another man to react if they see my child running around. So I just stopped, stopped fast and grabbed as many kids as I could as possible and just made it up. Specialist Oakley, how, how long did this incident occur uh, from the time that these young kids came in uh, to that store and, and told you that uh, there's a shooter uh, until, and, until now, basically? How long was the active shooting going on, as far as you could tell? Well, um, while I was buying there, I was in there buying a jersey. He came in there, and then um, it, two minutes probably about went by, you know, so I could swipe my card and stuff. And I walked out, and I walked down to Foot Locker, so I'll say... From me making it 
from the kid telling me to me hearing gunshots, it was about maybe like like a quick five to five to seven minutes. What were the folks saying to you, uh, Specialist Oakley, as you were walking around? Were you walking around in, in military uniform or just in the civilian clothes? No, I was just in civilian clothes. Like, um, nobody was really, because the kid was just running around saying it was an active shooter. Cause I don't know how he found out, but the people around the mall weren't really paying him no attention, you know, until um, gunshots popped off and then a whole bunch of uh, mall cops were running around with their M4s and stuff, just running around. That's when people, you know, started to run around screaming. Did you actually hear any gunshots? Yeah. You did? Two. You heard two me gunshots? And, me, and, me, me, me and the guy. That, uh, I don't know who the other guy was, but he, we just ended up being right next to each other the whole time, but he heard it as well. So what, know, did you, military, what did you do? What, what did you do? What so did you do? I know you're a military. I, you're in the U.S. Army. You're a specialist. But what, what did you do when you heard those gunshots? Honestly, anybody in the military can tell you, like, it's something you can't explain. Like, I don't even remember. Like, I just remember because I just remember, uh, I just remember, you know, just trying to get those kids out because we're like, we, we're trained to pull your gun out and, you know, take cover or save or shoot whoever's in front of you that's the enemy you know what i'm saying so that's something i just i can't explain you just have to be in the military to really, to, to really understand what i was going through through that time so your objective your goal your immediate goal was to help save these kids as opposed to running toward the incident where the shooting was going on even right. though you were armed, even though you were armed right because when i was in Foot Locker, at first i was just thinking for myself you know just hide but through the when they shut the cages you can see uh like through it, through the case, and all you see is just a whole bunch of kids. So, you know, I just thought about getting the kids out the way, man. I, anything could happen. The straight bullet can fly by or anything. I was just worried about the kids. I wasn't, once I seen kids, I wasn't too worried about myself. And so you helped, uh, helped the kids. How were the kids doing? You know, they were anxious to just jump. Like, when they were in my arms, they were trying to jump out of my arms. But, you know, I'm trying to keep them as tight as possible. Like, they, they, they're kids. They don't really understand what's going on. And then at that, I think they were just scared. They weren't by their parents or nothing. As far as you they can tell, stunning. you're still you're still at the uh, Cielo Vista Mall right now. Uh, specialist, uh, is is it over? Are people letting you walk around, or are they forcing you to stay put? Um, at first they were forcing me to stay put, but like I was, I came out on the other side of the mall, so I was just walking to my car. So I had to walk all the way around. So it was just a whole bunch of people just walking, just walking, but. The Border Patrol was trying to, you know, push everybody back. But I made it to my car. I guess they didn't see me. I made it to my car, and I drove around. And um, I had just parked, and a couple of news people just walked up to me. And uh, I guess they just asked me some questions and stuff, and they, I just took an interview and all that other stuff. Specialist Oakley, uh, is there anything you want to share, anything else you want to share with our viewers here in the United States and around the world? I just hope those kids are safe, man, and to the parents that if you're looking for your child, I hope I, I – was able to get your child out of there as quick as possible. And I just, I just pray that all the kids and just bystanders that were in the mall and at Walmart just made it out safely. And it's, it's really tragic. I, I wasn't expecting this to happen. It was just, I was, just, you know, on a normal day paying bills the first of the month. I was just minding my business. This, this, this is something that just it shocked me. I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, nobody was expecting this, but unfortunately, it happens way too often. Uh, and Specialist Glendon Oakley, thanks, uh, first of all, for your service uh, to the United States. Uh, you're uh, in the U.S. Army. Thanks for what you did today in helping those kids in the face of this mass shooting. Uh, we'll stay in close touch with you. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, Roger. Hey, how you doing? This is Seji Hito here to bring you the news. Um, so you've seen both videos. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a, a rehash, but I wanted to just put both videos out there because this man and uh, the other man deserve as much credit uh, in the world for what they did. Uh, this black man, like I told you guys before, this is not the first time that an active shooting took place and a black man jumped in and tried to do whatever he can. Uh, we had a black man before. It was a Kroger shooting um, that happened uh, maybe was it earlier this year, maybe last year sometime, somewhere in between a, uh, you know, the, the last uh, six to seven months, there was a, a Kroger shooter who originally, white man, who tried to uh, go into a church and commit a mass shooting there. But luckily the church doors weren't open at that time. I think they were opening around 10 uh, a.m. And he decided to go into the Kroger. And when he get made it into the parking lot, he circled around a couple of times. He stopped his car, he got out, 
and he shot and killed a uh, an elder uh, black male and a, a black woman, both elders in the community. And he passed by a a white man and he said, hey, he saw him with the gun. He was like, hey, remember, whites don't kill whites. I won't shoot you. You don't shoot me. And that white man let him get away. Now, there was a black man who was there with his family and he looked at the situation. He was like, I can't let this go down. He was like, it's either me or him. And he took out his gun and he was uh, he was licensed to carry and he started firing shots. And due to the fact that he was firing back at uh, the Kroger shooter, police were able to capture him. But uh, little coverage was shown of the black man who basically uh, potentially saved untold other lives. So now we have a military man, black man, yet again, who is uh, more than likely faced a lot of racism and, and things of that nature in this country, but he still served. And uh, he's still doing his job, even when he's not on the front lines He's still back at home fighting. He just came back recently from uh, Kuwait uh, serving and he, you know, he comes back home and he has to pull out, you know, his weapon and protect people. So let's get into some information uh, about this young man here. A 22 year old Army automated logistics specialist assigned to the 504th Composite uh, Supply Company 142nd Combat Support uh, Sustainment. Battalion, 1st Armored Division, uh, Sustainment Brigade in Fort Bliss, Texas, Oakley, have been shopping at a sporting goods store inside the Cielo Vista Mall in El Paso when a young child burst into the store shouting that an active shooter um, at a nearby Walmart. When Oakley exited the store minutes later, he headed to the neighboring Foot Locker. He heard uh, gunshots echoing across the mall. He immediately pulled out his Glock 9mm that's registered in his name under Texas Concealed Carry Law uh, while he had just returned from an incident-free deployment in Kuwait. Oakley was born into a military family. His father, uh, Lyndon Oakley Sr., served 31 years before retiring in 2011 at the rank of Sergeant Major. His mother, Wendelin D. Oakley, retired as a Master Sergeant in 2001 after two decades, and his older sister, Glenda Oakley, is a retired First Lieutenant. And this is a quote from Oakley. I heard four kids died, he said, his voice softened. I wish I could have gotten more kids out of there. I wish those kids who ran would have stayed. I just think, what if that was my child? How would I want some other man to react? I wish they had some sense of service. So as you heard, there were um, dozens of kids that were in the mall uh and in the walmart you know in the in the area that he was located that were left without parents and due to the fact that they were left without parents they were left without protection and due to the fact that they were left without protection this black man who served and who has a family black family who served jumped in and did what he was trained to do like i said before um i have my issues with the military and you know how black people are treated and you know things of that nature but um you know all of those make america great and you know uh we stand for the military this and about the vets this a lot of y'all need to be standing up for this man right here that that's what y'all need to be doing um a lot of people need to close their mouths because the same people who want to yell out you know all of that rhetoric go back home and uh make america great I promise you, you were probably some of the people that were there running. In any of these small incidences, you would have been the, the main people running away instead of running into the line of fire, trying to uh, protect and risk your own lives for somebody else. Like I said, a lot of people out here are cowards, but obviously Mr. Oakley and his family are not. This man did a, a job that so few of us would have done ourselves, you know, instead of, you know, the fight or flight, he fought. He he was like, yo, let me just grab my gun and let me see what I can do and see what I can see and, you know, try to get out who I can. And that's exactly what he did. And you heard him say that he wished that he could have done more. He wished he could have saved the kids who ran. He wished they would have stayed and he wished he could have got more out. He was only able to get 
you know, three out himself. And then by that time, police or SWAT started coming in and they more than likely saw him. And before anything can escalate any further, he told everybody else to run and he just listened to everything that they had to say. He got on the ground while also recording and, you know, hope for the best. So, you know, like I said before, this is what happens when you actually have black people out here who are trained or black people out here who are uh, licensed to carry and who are able to protect themselves. We are some of the most welcoming and some of the most overprotective people out here. Even if, you know, those are not our kids, it's like, yo, I'm not going to stand by and let those kids die because I wouldn't want that to happen to, you know, my family or me or somebody else that I know. That's the type of people that we are. And we're still that way, no matter how we get treated in this country by white people or whoever's in charge. So shout out, much love and appreciation um, and a salute to uh, Mr. Oakley and your family, all of those, you know, who have, you know, served and followed in you know, those footsteps, much love and appreciation to you, much love and appreciation to, you know, your bloodline. And I also want to mention about Mr. Oakley. He, uh, he mentioned how, when he was younger, he used to get into, you know, a lot of trouble and he was coming from a military family. Like he was, he was doing normal kid stuff, you know, in and out of trouble, you know, he had tattoos, you know, things like that, you know, just getting in with the wrong crowd. And then he straightened himself up. And he became the man that you see that was in both interviews. Now, like I said before, due to the fact that a lot of people have their own perception and their fears, when they would have seen Mr. Oakley the first time with a do-rag on and basic clothes, they would have thought he was just another black man. But, but unbeknownst to them, this dude is in the military with the military family. So like I said, this is why people need to keep their judgments to themselves. Look at the stark contrast here. You got a white male who looks like a white Urkel who decided to come in and just start shooting up the place for no reason because he's filled with hate and fear. And he's following in the footsteps of all of the other white shooters like Dalen Roof and, you know, all of, you know, the other ones, too, including a New Zealand shooter. And then you have Mr. Oakley, a black man, a minority in America. One of the ones who, you know, more than likely faced some bigotry and racism in uh, his lifetime and understands what other black people have to go through. You got one that's you got a white boy that's willing to take lives and you got a black man that's willing to save them. So I'm just going to let that marinate. And as always, peace, love and stay tuned for the next video.